Okay, so this is an outline of a high quality embodiment group training. It's just an outline, it's going to look different for different people. And this relates a little bit to the exam criteria, the standards I talked about in a previous video. So in group context, what does that look like? Well, obviously we've got the relationship building at the beginning, making connection, very, very important. Let's say different ways to that, whether it's humor or establishing your credentials or you know, business context. Here's some companies I've worked with. Um, making connections to what people care about, using their language, that, that connection part, absolutely vital. You, you can only do as deep training as you have connection, yeah? Next up at the beginning, the aim, like why are we doing this, yeah? The aim kind of comes back in at the end as the application, it's kind of the same thing. So it might be, oh, I suppose this is a question, this is we kind of call it the hook and the catch, yeah? So it might be, would it be useful to learn a technique to relax under pressure so you can get more done, be happier and have better relationships? Are there times in your life where you're stressed and you'd like to be a bit less stressed? It's more of a coaching method, right? Um, you could do this one-on-one -on -one the same system as well. That's the hook. I thought, yeah, actually, that would be useful nine times out of ten, right? Um, okay, at the end, it would be like, right, you've just learned centering, way of relaxing under pressure, da, 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 da. so where would it be useful to apply that? Where things people might say, everywhere, it's great. And you say, right, specifically, at work, okay, specifically, right, in a meeting, beginning of a difficult presentation or meeting that you know you've got tomorrow, right, how are you going to remember, right, put it in your diary. So we get that, that application. Um, often there's a flow of training, we have the aim, we have the kind of reason for that, we're making it practical. Um, here's an example, I might give a client example as well, connecting it to their concerns. A method, so there's a clear method laid out, this is back to the operational language, yeah. Um, then often people try things. Uh, embodiment for me is an experience. It's one of the difficulties of a video learning series like this actually is like, yeah, I'm encouraging you to practice, I'm encouraging you to go explore this with yourself, with clients, whatever. It's definitely um, to be tasted, to be explored. You won't learn embodiment just from hearing me talk, right? So, um, yeah, giving people an experience is key. By definition, you're not doing body work without an experience. Um, that could be a short paired exercise, a big group exercise. After that, I normally get people to debrief in pairs. Um, not just because that's what you do, like, why do you debrief? Well, some people think out loud. To name the insight and be socially witnessed in that is important. I'll often only give one or two minutes, because it's not about a big chat, it's not about intellectualizing or theories, it's just to name it and be heard in that. Um, to clarify what they've learned non-verbally, verbally, makes it easier to bring out into the world, right? If you do it in twos, everybody gets a chance to speak, even more the shy people, especially if you give a changeover period, yeah? So I'm um, very efficient in that way, I give everyone a chance to do that. Then I'll normally bring it back to the group and see what people want to say. Um, and again, not just because we always talk about embodiment. Um, groups are often very tempted to spend most of their time talking about embodiment rather than being embodied because it's more familiar and easier for many people, yeah? Um, so there's some limits on time there that may feel unfamiliar in body work. And I kind of say up front, like, here's why we're doing that, to create clarity and to have more time doing the actual experience, which is a juicy bit. But there's value in bringing groups back together. People say things that other people was like on the tip of their tongue, they didn't quite get the insight, or bring in a different gender or cultural perspective they would have missed for themselves. Um, and again, part of that group kind of bonding to build more relationship in the group is that sharing of experience. So valuable to do that. So that's normally the process I'll use is like purpose, aim, connecting to their life, um, you know, getting that hook, getting their buy-in in some way through questioning or just saying, look, here's how it'd be useful. Um, then we have an experience, pair debrief, group debrief. That's a pretty normal flow um, for any, any one exercise in a group session. Uh, and then, of course, the end of the session, doing that on a kind of bigger scale, which would be not just for a particular exercise, but like, what was your key insight for today? What's one in one sentence, nice and clear again? Yeah, um, a conciseness creates clarity. Yeah. So what's one key insight that you could talk to a loved one about this tonight or tomorrow? What's one key practical takeaway? What's one key tool you can use? Getting them to name this, to write it down. Um, you know, I'll give time for the kind of more kind of introverted people to make some notes and to have their own time. So. So that's an outline for how you can run a group embodied session. Um, obviously these are just general principles here, so it's going to be different every time.